we get these stories showing up in Exodus 3, 4, and so forth. And if we look at verses 1 to 17 in Exodus 4, we hear about the plague of frogs, the plague of gnats, the plague of flies. Some people try to take a very naturalistic approach to explain how all this would have happened, that perhaps there was some kind of uh, really muddy Nile River or some kind of bacteria that made the river turn red to look like blood, and that would have caused the fish to die and the frogs to jump out of the river, and eventually they would die if they don't get back in the water. And of course, this would lead to gnats and flies hovering around the body. So all that makes sense. It's all interesting. And I personally am not exactly, I don't know if that's exactly what God was trying to convince us of when he had these stories recorded, to have some kind of scientific explanation for all these different plagues. What I do think he was trying to do is send a very strong message about who's in charge. So if we learn a little bit about Egyptian, ancient Egyptian religion, the pharaoh was the embodiment of their entire religious system. The pharaoh was supposed to embody order, standing against chaos. The pharaoh was a representative of all the gods. And as far as we know, there were hundreds and hundreds of gods that the Egyptians worshipped. Every god had its own function to control some aspect of life. If you look at Egyptian geography, you have essentially the chaos of the desert. And then it was actually called the Red Land. And the, the Black Land, which is the fertile soil left by the Nile River. And that's where civilization would flourish. And the role of the Pharaoh and the Egyptian religion was to hold back the encroaching forces of chaos that come from the desert, the blinding sandstorms and the, the dust that comes in and chokes plants and animals and chokes out life. So the purpose again for the Pharaoh was to be the embodiment of order and the gods of Egypt provided order instead of chaos. And they apparently were in charge of the created order, of the created world. But what does God do? He inverts all that. He shows that he can actually bring chaos, not because God is a God of chaos, but because he's trying to show that he is in charge. He wants to point out to Pharaoh, who thinks himself as a god and a representative of the gods, that God himself, not the Egyptian gods, not the Pharaoh, he is the one who brings or removes chaos. And the fact that all this chaos descends upon Egypt was supposed to convince all the Egyptians that, well, the Pharaoh truly isn't a god and certainly doesn't represent the gods because they're not keeping the forces of chaos at bay, as they all promised. Instead, what we have is Moses who is God's representative, telling people, here's what you need to do to avoid God's destruction. And the powerful message is that God is in charge. And he witnesses this by bringing chaos to the Egyptian realm because they believed that they were immune to chaos, that they were worshiping the correct gods. And ultimately, it is God who removes the chaos and brings order and stability once again. Unfortunately for the Egyptians, they don't seem to get the message fully. They don't come to understand that it is the God of Israel. It is the God that they should be worshiping. It is a God that Moses himself is representing, the great I am, as God told Moses was his name. So I take this as really powerful uh, story for our own lives, that God ultimately is in charge. There is chaos in our lives, and God can actually cause the chaos to dissipate if we choose to listen to him. We can choose to harden our hearts like the Pharaoh and believe that we are our own God, or we could worship other gods that we think will take the chaos out of our lives, or we can choose to worship the living God and watch as he removes the chaos from our lives. This, I believe, is one of the most powerful messages of the story in Exodus and the story of the plagues.